All right, Tim Doyle, fresh off his Horseshoe Hammonds trip in nearby Indiana and the Chicago Wind, joining us here in HQ to keep the conversation going, Tim. So when we take a look at the Pac-12, I, I had the odds right there moving forward. When you look at those particular odds, if I were asking you to put a few shekels on a Pac-12 team, which one would you advise? Tommy, don't you feel happy for the Pac-12? I know you're a West Coast guy, but the Pac-12 is always like, go sit on the sideline. It kind of reminds me when Kelly Kapowski in Saved by the Bell, when her dad lost his job and she couldn't go to the prom, like she still went to the prom with Zach, but they sat outside. I mean, that is a tearjerker. If you have not watched Saved by the Bell, you have not lived. My point being, Finally, the Pac-12 is getting some love, but the reality is they're winning. And if I had to choose a team, it would be USC. Uh, dominant performance against Drake. And then, Tommy, I don't even know what you would call that against Kansas. It was the largest loss in NCAA history for the Jayhawks. And Isaiah Mobley had 17 points against Kansas, banged down four threes. And Evan Mobley, we all know about him. He's the guy whose stock is just jumping through the roof every single game that he plays. He may even pull both himself into the number one pick in the NBA draft. Pac-12 getting a lot of love, and rightfully so. UCLA, Oregon State, really the whole league top to bottom. Colorado, even though they got bounced, they had a pretty impressive win over Georgetown. And Andy Enfield, who got Dunk City for the Sweet 16 in 2013, gets a balanced USC team through the Sweet 16, knock it off Kansas. I mean, they have seven guys who have six points a game or more, and they see the Oregon Ducks, who they only matched up once this year with. They knocked them off. And if they win that game, they got Gonzaga. And what a storyline that would be, Tommy. Arguably the best player in college basketball, Evan Mobley, going up against the best team in college basketball, Gonzaga. All right, maybe Mobley's not the best college player, but he's the best NBA prospect. So Pac-12 getting some love. And Kelly Kapowski did end up marrying Zach. I'm so happy she didn't choose Slater. That was such a better choice. You know what I call that game last night? An easy cover if you laid the point or point and a half with USC. By the way, Andy Enfield, 9-0 and against the spread in nine tournament games as head coach. And yes, yeah, so last week we got Jesse Spano reference. This week we got Kelly Kapowski. Next week we're going to get that Zach reference there. I love it, Tim. Keep it going. All right, so when we take a look now and segue over to Michigan, right, and we take a look at their futures, I mentioned how 25-1 to 1 for USC was the best in the Pac-12. Michigan coming in third best at plus 650. So if someone's looking at laying that Michigan bet right now, Tim, what's the confidence level that you might have with the Wolverines? Yeah, I mean, it's building confidence. Uh, I'll say that. You know, they got big performances from guys like Brown and Brooks who averaged less than double figures game. Each of those guys had... 21 points each. They made eight of the Michigan 10 threes. I picked LSU in that game, especially against the spread. All the money was coming in on the Tigers. Good for Michigan. They're going to have their hands full of Florida State. Florida State's defense is holding opponents to less than 54 points a game. They held UNCG to 54 points, Colorado to 53, and that was coming off a game where Colorado made 16 threes and scored 96 points against Georgetown. Florida State's length being the tallest team in college basketball, I think is going to bother Michigan. I'd be surprised if they get by the Seminoles. Looking at their breakdown of their region, I think the Florida State game will be tougher than, let's just say, if they meet Alabama with a chance to go to the Final Four. So get past the Seminoles. I think their chances really improve. All right. Then there's Gonzaga, of course. Everybody's favorite. Everybody's picking many pools to get to the championship game and win the whole thing. They're 2-0 and ATS, but the Oklahoma game was oh so close. That final minute with the flagrant foul, Timmy. But what is the strategy with them moving forward as we look at 13 and a half against Creighton this weekend, potentially USC or Oregon in the lead eight, and then all the way to the final four? You know, Tommy, when I look at their games on a you know nightly basis, even when they're in the WCC, you know, I always have this philosophy with Gonzaga this year. You either bet Gonzaga or, or you don't bet the game. Because, like, yesterday, Oklahoma never really had a chance to win. You know, and I called the Norfolk State game. I said it was going to be 100-50. to 50. It was kind of close. It was 98-55. Like, they just blow out people. And they're so well-balanced. You know, you bring guys off the bench like Watts and, and Cook. I mean, Aaron Cook averaged 15 points at Southern Illinois. Now he averages four and barely plays for a Gonzaga team 
that everyone knows that Corey Kispert's a lottery pick, that Jalen Suggs is going to be a top five pick. And then Drew Timmy with that old dirty stash. He was outstanding against Oklahoma. Here's Dale Gonzaga. You either bet Gonzaga or you don't bet the game. You either bet the over or you don't bet the game because they're capable of hanging 100 on you every single game. They're just, they don't make mistakes. They play like old man basketball. They move the ball. They could shoot the three. They got great basketball panache and clearly, and deservingly so, they're your favorite to win it all. I forgot who did the post game interview with Drew Timmy, but it looks like his mom tried to really a message to get him to shave that thing. And he's like, Sorry, Mom, I'm going to keep it through the tournament. Uh, so it was for him a, a great win for Gonzaga as they move on. All right, Tim, we, we certainly love our fair share of parlays. We know they're hard to hit, right? So we just have a, a kid better winning 33 k on a 10-game parlay off of 10 bucks. And before I get your thoughts, we got I got like some home video we got to show our viewers in case they missed it. Here it is. The way they reacted, you would think he was an Abilene Christian or Oral Roberts fan. But take a look at this card, Tim. What do you think about the selections? Because obviously to win that much, you can't go all chalk. No, the Abilene Christian pick over Texas. You know, it's so funny because when you see it, it goes, yeah, this all kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? It's always easier after the race is over to choose the horse that won. Uh, Loyola Chicago, I picked them. But I didn't pick Abilene Christian. Oral Roberts was an amazing pick. He won an outstanding game. I mean, you want to talk about a roller coaster of emotions. I mean, you're happy, you're sad, you're crying. I do know this. Once you start winning game seven, game eight, you got to start hedging. You know, there, there's just, you got to be smart once in a while because even if you said, I'm going to come out winning $500, $1,000, $4,000. You know, the other night I hit a parlay with Ohio Moneyline versus Virginia. And before the game, I bet Virginia Moneyline just because you can't be greedy. And when you put yourself in a position like that to make a score, you got to take advantage of it. I was explaining all these things to my partner in crime when I was at the Horseshoe Casino for the last four days. What an outstanding job it was working with Liz Edwards. And I taught her a lot. I put my arm around her and I said, here's the deal, all right? Money line means you just win the game. She goes, but what does minus 300 mean? They go, you got to put 300 to win 100, right? She goes, why do you keep calling everyone at the casino a mush? I go, get these mushes away from me. Put that guy in the bathroom for crying out loud. And lastly, I explained to her, Tommy, those that bet the under go to weddings and root for divorce. They root for famine. They root for bad things to happen. And right before I left, it was Abilene Christian, UCLA. And we got in on a live action play, plus 12 and a half. I gave her a little free ticket there. And we rooted home Abilene Christian. A guy blocked a three at the buzzer. They covered 12 and a half. It was awesome working with Liz. I'm just not sure. I think I might have corrupted her because she texted me today. She goes, what are we doing tonight in the NBA? Tommy, we may have a problem on our hands. Yeah, she posted on social media the ticket, the 12 and a half for Abilene Christian. But but Tim, you're going to be good. You're going to be responsible and tell her to be smart, just like you did with that parlay and the whole hedging stuff. But yes, we got Liz. I love it. Tim Doyle with the very latest here. Tim, certainly appreciate it, my friend. Thanks, buddy. All right, the Thanks, Iowa College Tom. Basketball Podcast. Matt Norlander and Gary Parrish have been busy naturally so they were talking about all the games remember we had a, a Monday first weekend type feel because of this season typically we have the Thursday to Sunday type deal so again the guys recap it and get you ready for the sweet 16 this weekend want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game the highlights the picks the instant analysis no yelling no fake debates no politics hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment